87 days until the last American will vote and decide who will be the 47th president of the United States. This is the warning. The first time I ever heard the word meltdown, it was with regard to the nuclear plant at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania. When a nuclear plant melts down, or you're told it may be melting down, or it could melt down, it really doesn't matter when you're nine years old. The word you remember is meltdown. Hollywood, like politics, is always downriver from culture. What this means is that in the aftermath of the Three Mile Island accident, there were movies, the China Syndrome, the nuclear freeze movement, meltdown. It was a word that was popularized into the vocabulary. Of course, later, there was a real meltdown at Chernobyl. There was a moment in time when the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, was told the entirety of the Ukraine, East Germany, Poland, Hungary, the entirety of the Warsaw Pact would be uninhabitable. Meltdown. There was, of course, the meltdown at Fukushima after the massive Japanese earthquake and the tsunami that hit the TEPCO plant. And there was, of course, the meltdown at Mar-a-Lago. He's unhinged. Now, the simple truth of the matter is Donald Trump at 78 is too old to be president. He can't distinguish what's real and not. These are trying days in Mar-a-Lago. Trump's news conference was completely unhinged. He is unfit, manifestly unfit, not just for the presidency, but for any position of responsibility. He's unqualified to be the greeter at a Walmart on a volunteer basis, let alone the commander in chief. But let's go through lie by lie and set the record straight. And I've spoken to the biggest crowds. Nobody's spoken to crowds bigger than me. If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, and you look at ours, same real estate, same everything, same number of people. If not, we had more. And they said he had a million people, but I had 25,000 people. So here's a classic Trump absurdity. He's talking about the January 6th crowd on the ellipse, which was 10,000 people, which he incited to march on the Capitol where seven people died, something he denied during the news conference where he said there were no deaths at the insurrection he incited. There were seven. There were deaths on the day and there have been suicides since that day. But the crowd that he's comparing himself to is one of the most moral and righteous in all of American history. His crowd of 10,000, Trump is saying, is precisely the same as one that was 20 times larger that gathered in 1963 that was ecumenical in spirit. It was called the Freedom March. And the Freedom March came with Martin Luther King at the lead but not alone. He was surrounded that day by white men and women, by black men and women, by people of all races, creeds, and religion. He said, challenging America, just live up to the words that you wrote down. And he did it in the shadow of Abraham Lincoln's shrine, the temple where the memory of Lincoln rests forever as it does in the hearts of his countrymen for whom he saved the Union, as the inscription above Lincoln reads. On the walls are the two great speeches, the Gettysburg Address, the Second Inaugural, with malice towards none, with charity towards all. So no, Donald Trump and his insurrectionist mob and his calls to retribution and revenge are not comparable in any way, in any form, to the moral dignity of Martin Luther King leading the Freedom Parade at the founding of the American Republic that we have now. That day, the work before and the work after helped make King every bit as much of an American founder as Lincoln, as Jefferson, as Hamilton, as Washington. What Trump is, is the great desecrator of the nobility of a profoundly true 
an important idea at the core of this country. Why is it that millions of people were allowed to come into our country from prisons, from jails, from mental institutions, insane asylums, even insane asylums? That's a, uh, it's a mental institution on steroids. That's what it is when you see the people that are coming into our, these are institutions that are being emptied out, not in South America, all over the world, including South America, all over the world. Prisons are being emptied out into our country. Yes, immigration is an issue foremost on the minds of the American public. It's important to understand immigration dropped to a net zero during the Trump presidency, not because of anything Trump did. There was no wall built. It's all bullshit. What happened was a global pandemic that stopped the movement of people. Now, when trying to get inside Trump's head, it's always difficult because you have to open yourself to the possibility of a massive intellectual deficiency that's hard to wrap your head around, even when pretending. So Donald Trump is not a smart man. He's not. He cheated his way into Wharton. He cheated his way into the University of Pennsylvania. He's never earned anything. He was an accidental president. He was a bankrupt casino magnate. And he was somebody who was handed a fortune by his father that he squandered, having to be bailed out over and over and over again. Trump thinks that we think He's a genius. He's not. Here's the most incredible part. When you dissect all of Trump's speeches, it seems obvious that he believes all over the world, people are mass escaping insane asylums. And these places aren't called that anymore. But in all of the escapees from the insane asylums are trying to break into America to get into asylums here. When you dissect the incoherence of what Trump is saying, this is his argument. He's not somebody that you can communicate information to. He can't learn things. He can't absorb facts because the world he exists in doesn't account for reality versus delusion. You know, with uh, Hillary Clinton, I could have done things to her that would have made your head spin. I thought it was a very bad thing. Take the wife of a president of the United States and put her in jail. And then I see the way they treat me. That's the way it goes. But uh, I was very protective of her. Nobody would understand that, but I was. I think my people understand it. They used to say, lock her up, lock her up. And I'd say, just relax, please. And here's the deal. He never said relax. When the political extremist, disgraced general, and fascist introduced to America the lock her up chant, I was sitting on an NBC news set and I said, welcome to the era of banana republicanism. Trump did that. He could have done terrible things. What's that, Donald? Put her in a concentration camp like you've threatened to do to tens and scores of millions of Americans? Your restraint, Donald, is positively Christ-like. What a sweet man you are. This is not a beneficent statement. This is a threat. Elect me, or here's the terrible things I'll do to you. I could have, but I didn't. Gee, trust me. I'm gonna speak in idiomatic English, New Jersey dialect. Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? This is the person who wants to be the commander in chief, the president of the United States, the head of state, please, it's disgraceful. To me, it doesn't matter. But to her, from her standpoint, I think it's very disrespectful to both, really. Whether it's Indian or black, I think it's very disrespectful to both. To me, it doesn't matter. There are 87 days to go. And sadly, I'm going to refer back to this clip, going to play it again, because the prediction I'm about to make is going to come true, and it's going to be much worse than people imagine it to be. The level of racial antagonism, race baiting, cruelty, disgusting filth that is going to come out of Trump's mouth 
out of J.D. Vance's mouth, out of Stephen Chung's mouth, out of the mouths of his surrogates, his retainers, his loyalists, his band of MTGs is going to be mind-blowing. As bad as you think it is, it will be worse. The attacks will be direct. They will be overt. They will be dehumanizing, degrading, insulting, and they will hearken back to some of the worst chapters in this country's history. And so what Trump is doing here is, yes, stupid, but it is profoundly disrespectful and demeaning. Kamala Harris is the vice president of the United States of America. Her father was Jamaican who came to the United States. Her mother of Indian descent. In America, Kamala Harris is regarded, thought of, treated as black, like every other American similarly situated, period. She's black. But Donald Trump is trying to take something from her, an identity, twist it, and shove a knife in, trying to claim as somebody who earned nothing in his life, that somebody who did, in fact, did not because she was a beneficiary of preferential treatment because of her race, which she used conveniently only recently that she long denied. It is an elaborate Trumpian smear, grade A neurotoxic bullshit. It's disgusting. And the American people are rejecting it. The good news is it's so fucking boring. There's not a word for it anymore, except for maybe Trump, the oldest, most boring act in town. Our fading pale as a cadaver, Norma Desmond, President Norma Desmond. That's who Trump is. He cannot stand to see the power of optimism, the literal Apollo rocket firing lighting up the sky, illuminating Kamala Harris's crowds, bigger than his, enthusiastic, and coming to end his political career in just a little bit. Mr. President, you have not had a public campaign event for nearly a week now. Tomorrow you'll be in Montana, which is not a swing state. Some of your allies have expressed concern that you're not taking this race seriously, particularly what at a, a time where there is enthusiasm on the other side. Why haven't you been campaigning this week? Uh, because I'm leading by a lot and because I'm letting their convention go through. Look at the polls. Donald Trump is a fading star. And this is a great Norma Desmond moment. My ratings, my ratings. I'm winning, I'm winning. I'm number one in the box office, except it's all imaginary. The only place this is real is on the deck at Mar-a-Lago. And if you have a million dollars and want to be regaled by tales like this for the rest of your natural life, if you want to put a bandage on your ear and sit gazing at this face with a million bucks, and probably price will go down in coming years, you can achieve this. You can join Mar-a-Lago. And the mad, 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 mad king will hold court there, no doubt, for the next 25 to 30 years, living to a ripe old age of 115. But his era of being able to mainline malice into the bloodstream of the country is mercifully coming to an end. Because history, once again, almost improbably, has anointed Americans who can get the job done. When Trump was winning a month ago, was he talking about any of this crazy shit? He was not. Donald Trump is losing. And he's losing badly now. This is all before the Democratic National Convention. If the election were today, Kamala Harris would be president-elect of the United States by midnight. But it's not today. Donald Trump should know John McCain's favorite quote of Chairman Mao's, apocryphal or not, was to remember, 
It's always darkest before it's completely black. Now, Donald Trump impugns the motives of everyone and everything that resist his claim on absolute power, which some amount of Americans have been dumb enough or naive enough or malice enough or apathetic enough to fall for. We should love our fellow citizens, but we should maintain our judgment about people who would bandage their ears and stare gauzy-eyed, dewy-eyed at a rapist, which is what Trump is. Non-judgmentalism, the cardinal rules of mind your own business, do not mean tolerance for the most despicable characters in the country who want political power preaching a dogma of command and control over every single facet of your life. As Donald Trump loses, everything will get worse that comes out of his mouth. Each will be a piece of evidence about how much worse he is than even the most pessimistic amongst us thought. It will build, and it will build, and it will build. The racism, the menace, the intimations of violence, right-wing thuggery of the type we're seeing in the UK is coming to the United States. Have no doubts about it. And it will have been caused as it was caused and it will be caused by a singular figure, the demagogic despot wannabe Donald John Trump. And he will light the fuse that he has carefully laid as he loses an election and he makes allegations like Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela, like a tin pot dictator, like a dime store Mussolini, that he makes allegations again, that he won an election, that he lost absent evidence. And this time, there will be no possibility of a comeback. The stakes will be higher and more existential. It will all be on the line. And so here we are. Kamala Harris is surging. Donald Trump is losing. And because he is losing, he is decomposing. Because he is decomposing, he is getting crazier. Because he is getting crazier, he is getting more menacing. And because he is getting more menacing, the threats and intimations to violence will grow from his most unhinged supporters, and they will find their mark. What a joke that there were people standing on television sets talking about new Trump, gentle Trump, spiritual Trump in the aftermath of the assassination. Trump reborn. Wow, isn't the word. This is The Warning. I'm Steve Schmidt. This is The Warning, and I invite you to join, subscribe, on our Substack, on our YouTube channel. Follow us. Welcome to the community.